All right, guys, how we doing? Welcome back to the Sean Fontana podcast. I hope you're well. It's Monday morning. I've got a coffee in my hand and life is good. If you've not got a coffee in your hand, pause this, go and make one, go and get one, sit back and let me tell you about my injury problems, stories and riddles. So it does feel like there's somebody out there with a fucking voodoo doll and stabbing me in the posterior tibialis. And if you're out there and you're listening to this, stop it. Please stop it. I've had enough. Anyway, back onto the topic is if, if people have been following my story through Instagram, through Facebook, then you'll probably know that a couple of weeks ago I got a pleural therapy injection, which is shortened to PRP. And what that is, is a basically the sports doctor or the clinician gets a, a syringe, puts it into your vein and draws out 15 mils of blood and from there puts that into the centrifuge and the centrifuge spins so fast that what it does is it splits the uh, red blood cells and the plasma and because the red blood cells are a little bit heavier than the plasma, the red blood cells will go to the bottom and the plasma will be at the top of the red, just at the top of the red blood cells. And this will probably give you about, you know, anywhere between four to six mLs of that yellow substance called plasma. <clears throat> and that contains the growth factors and the healing properties to help your tendons heal and regenerate and recuperate. So how that process starts is you see the, the sports doctor and they give you an ultrasound on your on your tendon and on your injury and from there they check to see if you are you know you, you you require a PRP injection because these things aren't just given to you know sort of mild to moderate you know strains or you know tears or whatever these are for you know real chronic you know tendons being in a really bad way being really overstretched and just lost its structure and you know eight months now down the road and my it I feel like I've got I have a handle on it some days but there was other days where just putting on a sock you know standing on my my right foot lifting my left leg off the ground to put a sock on I would either fall into the wall I'd fall into my cupboards or I'd fall onto the bed because my tendon just had completely it it didn't have its robustness and it didn't have its strength anymore and its structure it was a little bit, it was about 1% to 2% lengthened more than normal. And one thing's for sure, tendons do not like to be overstretched time and time and time again. And that's technically what causes tendinopathy and tendinitis. <clears throat> so, yeah, I got the ultrasound, showed that the, the tip, the post tip was in a chronic state. It was in a really bad way. And... That was around, I think it was £60 for the consultation and then the injection was £350. So you can tell that's a lot of money, like £410 to spend. You know, you, you could look at that and say that's 10 physiotherapy sessions. And, I, you know, I could, have pro I could have definitely wasted 10 physiotherapy sessions and probably still been in the same place I was prior to the injection. And I know there's a lot of physios out there that maybe don't believe in the plural therapy. Um, they think that, you know, they, they say the, the only side effect to plural therapy is that you have a, a lighter wallet. And maybe that is for some people, and it, it might be subjective, I don't know. But there is also research out there that shows that the plasma that gets injected back into your tendons do does have growth factors and healing factors that help regenerate and strengthen back up that that those those tendon areas that are, are either being weakened or in a chronic state so the protocol afterwards is and also it wasn't sore like don't the the sorest part was probably the needle that sat in your vein to give you know 15 mils of blood after that it's just like a light a little sting um when the needle goes to your your posterior your, well my posterior tibialis to inject the plasma in there the next thing is you need to take seven to ten days off <clears throat> and that means no running whatsoever uh, no loading no calf raises no stretches no cycling no cross training whatsoever 
anything that compresses a tendon at all is you know if, if you can like if you're you know I'm not an elite athlete but elite athletes would actually get put in a a boot and a little you know sort of those little um sort of the skateboardy things that where they put their knee on it and they would just they would go with one leg and they keep the other leg elevated something like that um so you know seven days completely off and I done it you know I I was like this is a lot of money I've been through a lot of pain with this I just want it to get fixed now like I'm at you know I'm sick to my back teeth of just this constant pain every day that I that just won't go away no matter how little mileage I do or you know how much rehab I'd done how much stretching um you know sort of the therapy modalities, whether it be massage, whether it be cupping, whether it be grasping, whether it be acupuncture, and you know, and all the the exercise I was doing, it just wasn't going away. And this was me also half in my mileage. So usually I'll run about a hundred miles a week, and now I was down to fifty miles a week. I'd, I'd run anywhere between forty and fifty miles a week, so I'm at forty to fifty percent of my mileage. And I just knew that if I was to creep this up, it's only going to get worse. So, again. Usually when you when you decrease loading in your tendons, you're supposed to get stronger and better, but this just wasn't happening. And then also the other flip side is that if you're doing your rehab exercises, you're putting the, the, the sort of load through it, whether it be your single leg calf raises, single leg soleus bent knee raises, isometrics, eccentrics. I was doing the whole shebang and just and things weren't moving um, in a, a sort of progressive fashion. So I took this. I took the seven days off, and my first my my first session back was fifteen times one minute of running, just easy with one minute of walking. And I think this is something that I've said to you before, and the sort of the new era of getting back to running is now this whole. Instead, of, I usually people would do you know I'd go back out and do a three mile run. Then the next day do a four mile run. Then the next day do a five mile run, and six and seven. You did it, but now there's this new era of returning to running, which is where you do this combined walking and running. And what actually happens is, as you get a little bit fitter, you can also get faster within the minute or the ninety seconds or the two minutes or the duration of your run. But because you're giving yourself that walk recovery, you can switch on and switch off from perfecting your technique, your cadence and your running form. And then also because you're running a little bit faster, your cadence will be better and your running economy will be better. So your foot's on the ground for less time. And usually some of those things are also related to lower limb or overuse injuries is that your foot's either on the ground for too long. Um, so your, your, ground, your ground contact time is poor you've got low cadence, so what's happening there is that there's, instead of you getting the, the plyometric effect from the sort of recoil from the ground and your, your basically your stretch reflex cycle and your Achilles and your tendons, the sort of little quick pop off the ground, you're kind of keeping your foot on the ground, you've diminished that energy and then you're actually using muscular force to then push yourself so it's a little bit of a different way that you're running if you're running slower and a little bit more labored so these like minute on minute offs help with you know keeping keeping your cadence high keeping keeping your form good and not getting too tired um and then leaving your foot on the ground for too long so started that 15 times on the minute of walking running 30 minutes total 15 minutes of run 50 minutes of walk and what i done was i replicated that another two times to just make sure that my tib was better and lo and behold, I know that, that it, yeah, I've, I've spoke to a few physios and they said some of them don't think that pleural therapy is beneficial. Um, but again, it might be subjective to the, the person that gets it. I don't know. But I genuinely feel that this injection has really helped me see, like, helped me see a light that this, this tendon is actually healing itself. Um, you know, like today, so what I've done was, that was three times fifteen on, uh, run and walk. The next one was I got I done fifteen times ninety seconds running, one minute walking. I think that took me up to about four point seven miles. So what I done there was I done four point seven miles. My ninety second pace we're getting down to about six minute mile pace or five forty five pace. 
So what I've done is I said, right, what I'll do is I'll do a five mile run, but I'll do it at a slower intensity. So what will happen is, so tendons, any injuries work on either, you know, if you increase load or you increase volume, both at the same time or either or, too much too soon and you can, an injury can take place. So what I looked at there was my 90 second efforts were at a very, very high intensity. But if I want to do five miles and increase the volume, I need to lower the intensity. And that's exactly what I've done. So I'd run five miles at, say, 7.15 minute, minute, minute mile pace. And instead of doing sort of down at the 5.45 end, that went well. Took a day off, came back, and now we're on Monday today. We are now, what would that be, 10 days into, you know, back into sort of building up training. Today I went out and done the same 15 times 90 seconds on with one minute recovery. And now I'm all the way back down at five minute mile pace. But again, the volume hasn't changed in terms of the duration of me running. So it's for 37 and a half minutes that total set is. But all I'm doing now is I'm increasing the intensity at which I'm running the 37 and a half minutes. But again, I've still got the one minute of walking recovery in there as well. So and you know I'm not limping I'm not hobbling I'm still I'm now being able to do my rehab exercises and another little gold nugget is that tendons love to have higher intensity loads put through them what I mean by that is your tendons like when you put weight a heavy weight through it so instead of doing say if it's calf raises using your body weight or 5 or 10 kilograms and doing, you know, 5 sets of 20, that isn't really actually helping regenerate and strengthen the tendon. What that's doing is it's helping strengthen and give muscular endurance to the muscles, like your calf and your soleus, but it's not actually really impacting the tendon. Your tendon wants you to actually bump up the weights, so maybe it go from 10 to 30 or 40 kilograms on your back, or whatever it may be, two dumbbells, whatever it is, and do maybe five sets of five or five sets of six instead. So you're bringing those reps all the way down, increasing the intensity, and tendons love that type of force. That's what helps them keep strong and helps them regenerate, recuperate if they're feeling weak or if they're feeling a little bit sort of achy um, and you feel there's a slight sort of dull ache or dull injury coming on. So hopefully that helps people if they're, they're struggling with some injuries and their tendons just now that they these will help with helping rehab the the tendon properly and again if you are injured don't be scared to do it. I think a lot of people old old school people like to just go you know if they're a distance runner they like to go and the 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 simple thing is always a a 20 minute or a 30 minute run test you know they always go out for 20 or 30 minutes and it's continuous and then from there they'll add either add on a mile or they'll add, they'll add on five minutes the next day, the next day, the next day. But now there's there is a lot of different ways to return to running. And these what I'm talking to you about with a one minute on, one minute off, or ninety seconds on, ninety seconds off, or whatever it may be, these are almost like mini sessions. So what what it means is that during that minute of time, you actually run quite fast. Or you, you might start so say I start in the the first couple at you know, outside seven minute mile pace because you're just warming up. But when you start to get warm, you start to actually go down to like quite quick paces without actually hurting anything. And what that allows us to do is get back to sessions faster. Because if we just do long, slow, easy running all the time, then it means that when we get back to doing, you know, say whether it's 200 meter reps, 300 meter reps, 400s, Ks, miles, tempo, it's all going to feel really, really, really fast um, because you're maybe running at 7, 7.30, 8 minute mile pace on these easy runs to try and like sort of build back up to running. But if you do this sort of new method, the walking and running, it, it means that you can run a little bit faster on that run pace, which allows you to get back to that simulated speed or closer to the simulated speed of either it being your tempo pace, marathon pace, 10k pace or 5k pace. 
I wouldn't say you know I, I really wouldn't say get any quicker than sort of if you're if you're getting down to five k pace and you're probably fully recovered to be honest. But I'd say like no quicker than probably you where you would see a a really really good tempo run being. So for me, a really good tempo run for me would probably be around five minute mile pace. And now I'm starting to get down to that pace. It still feels quite fast for ninety seconds, but it just shows I just need to you know the body just needs to sink back up with everything again. But I would say that not going any faster than probably, you know, a, a really slow 10k time for you or a really hard tempo, like sort of good tempo pace for you in the, the early stages. And then when you start to feel good, then yeah, you know, you just slowly chip away. But what you want to do is start returning back to sessions. So my thoughts would be from doing this and looking at, you know, today was 90 seconds of running minute of walking times 15 I got accumulated time of uh, distance of five miles so what I'd say then is right for so I've got five miles to play around with that's the volume so how do we gauge how do, how can we now manipulate that to make sure that I don't go any more than five miles but I get more from the five miles so what I could do is I could go and do you know I could go to the track and I could do a mile warm-up and a mile cool down and in between that I could do say 15 times 200 meters with a 200 jog recovery and what I'm doing is I'm still playing around, I'm still keeping to the volume. I'm not increasing the volume, but what I'm doing is I'm playing around with the intensity within the volume. And these things, that is still, that's you still making progress. You don't need to keep going, you know, five and a half, six, six and a half, seven, seven and a half, eight miles. You don't need to keep putting up the volume. What you can also do is keep the volume the same, but play around with the intensity within the volume and see if that actually helps boost recovery. Because again, tendons like force. So if you put a bit more force through them, then it might help stimulate the growth and the recovery and the repair of the tendon. So, you know, doing something a little bit quicker, which will help also your ground contact time, your running economy, your biomechanics and your cadence. All these things where your foot isn't on the ground for too long. It means it will help better your running style and get you back to training at the necessary paces that, allow you to achieve your your personal best within the the demands of your event so yeah you know it's it's just that i'm just coming at it from a different angle trying to get back to those training sessions because remember we can easy run all day long but easy running pace doesn't win races it's the intensity of your paces that we run during our training sessions that help us get to our personal best our lifetime best or to compete for, you know, a podium finish, or to compete higher up in the race. So always remember that it's, it's about trying to get back to your intensity paces that you once had done before you get injured. So hopefully this helps, you know, I just wanted a quick little podcast to help educate people on what plurotherapy was, because a lot of people don't know about it. The protocol that I went through, you know, with a seven to ten days off, some people might need ten days. I only needed seven, and on top of the minute on minute off of walking and running, or ninety seconds of walking and running, I'm also doing thirty minutes of easy cycling on the bike on the spin bike in the evening as well. So, I'm taking away the impact and just putting some extra, you know, aerobic work through there. Just one to keep the weight off, two to still keep sort of pushing that fitness because I want to get back quick. But again, I want to get back quick with keeping it as safe as possible, so not increasing the running load too much. I'll take the take the impact off the feet, off the off the body, and I'll go onto the bike. Again, I'd love to go on I'd I'd love to go in the swimming pool, but again being in Scotland in lockdown, it is quite it's it's difficult just now to, you know, go to the swimming pool unless it's outdoors, but the outdoor swimming pool here is David Lloyd's and I think it's about a hundred pounds a month and I know I love I wanna you know, I love my running and stuff like that, but I've just spent 410 quid in a bloody injection. I've got a 300 quid spin bike in there. I'll use that just now until the, the other gyms get opened up, which is a little bit cheaper to use. And yeah, hopefully this has helped maybe spark some insight to do you need to go and get a pleural therapy injection? Have you been feeling the same sort of things I've been feeling for the last eight months or longer? Have you been feeling things for the last the, the last couple of months and you need to start loading that tendon with heavier weights? Not high reps, heavier weights. Less reps, four, five, six reps, but at a heavy weight. I know that's tough in Scotland with the gyms being closed, but if you have a home gym 
or you have you know a backpack with some dumb you can put some dumbbells in and you can do some uh, single leg stuff off the step that'll be perfect for trying to stimulate tendon growth and tendon recovery and tendon regeneration and then the next one is the new way of getting back to running from an injury if you've been out for a wee while doing it minute of running minute of walking and then again completing the phase maybe a couple of times to see if there's no reaction before then you move on to the next stage but again you can dist- discuss that with your coach again if you want to keep following my story you know i'm on instagram at sean.fontana facebook sean fontana our business page is fontana fit personal training my website www.fontanafit.co.uk if you get any questions or queries about this that you want me answer in another podcast or on, on my Instagram page or whatever it may be, just drop me an email. It's sean at fontanafit.co.uk. I hope you enjoyed this one and I'll speak to you soon.